be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during a conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchdown phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nihal Jam from Nivama Institutional Equities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yes, thank you, Bikram. On behalf of Nivama, I would like to welcome you all to the Q4 FY23 and FY23 Earning Conference Call of Restaurant Brands Asia. From the management today, we have Mr. Rajiv Verman, whole time Director and Group CEO, Mr. Sandeep Day, Brand President, Indonesia, Mr. Sumit Zaveri, Group CFO and Chief Business Officer, Mr. Kapil Grover, Chief Marketing Sir, and Mr. Prashant Desai, Head of Strategy in IR. I would now like to hand over the call to Mr. Rajiv Verman for his opening remarks. Over to you, Raj. Morning to everyone. Uh, so as promised, we got Sandeep joining in from Indonesia. Uh, good morning to you, Sandeep, as well. Or, uh, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon by this time, right? <laughs> Um, so welcome to the call. Um, I will give you a very quick summary, first on India and then on Indonesia. And uh, after that, we'll hand it over to uh, to Sumit to go over the finance, then over to Kapil to go over uh, the marketing, and then Sandeep to go over Indonesia. So with that said, let me just quickly get you on the India business. For India business, uh, we had a good year. Uh, if you look at uh, revenues, uh, we were up both in uh, total revenues as well as in SSSG. Uh, gross profit margins, we were up. Uh, restaurant level EBITDA, we were up. Company level EBITDA, we were up. So we, we were basically a, a positive kind of a, a P&L and a positive kind of a, a growth story for India. So let me start with first uh, revenues. So FY23, INR 14,397 versus FY22, which is 9,437, uh, 9, which is a growth of 52.6%. That included a SSSG of 23.1. And if you look at the Q4 uh, numbers, Q4 FY23, uh, we had a 3,649 million. That was versus FY22. Uh, which was uh, 2,687, again, a growth of 35.8%, which includes uh, uh, SSG of 83 uh, Also, the net restaurant growth was 76, uh, which included uh, some closures and, and some openings, and I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, gross margin, again, FY23, we went to 66.4. Uh, that was against uh, 65.8 from the previous year, which is a 60 basis points improvement maintained 66.4 in Q4 in terms of uh, quarter over quarter in uh, in gross margin. So that's uh, despite all uh, all inflation that uh, uh, that was there in that quarter. And now, you know, we are happy that the inflation is, is uh, going in the downwards direction and uh, you will find our outlook uh, uh, in the future uh, uh, today towards the end of the call. Uh, going to restaurant level EBITDA, and I'm uh, giving you post uh, NDS numbers, and, and Sumit will then give you free NDS numbers when he goes into the PNL as well. So uh, let's start with FY23 uh, restaurant level EBITDA, which is 2,483 million, 17.3 percent, versus FY22, which is at 1,528 million, which is uh, 16.2. So another 110 basis point improvement on there. Q4 FY23 INR 666 million. That is 18.3 versus uh, Q4 of FY22, which is at 478, 70.0, another 50 basis point improvement here. And finally, the company EBITDA, again, post India's numbers here. FY23, 1654 million, which is 11.5 against FY22, which is 902, which is 9.6, uh, 190 basis point improvement here. And then Q4, uh, this ending quarter, FY23, we are at 423 million, which is 11.6% against the Q4, FY22, which is at uh, 302, again, 11.3, which is 30 basis point improvement. So as I highlighted, uh, improved revenues, improved gross margin, improved uh, restaurant EBITDA, and improved company EBITDA. Now, just uh, on the growth side, so we are, uh, we ended March 31st, uh, with 391 restaurants, uh, great uh, work done by our uh, development team there. Opened 88 restaurants, and then we were uh, optimizing our old portfolio, and we closed 12 uh, restaurants that were not profitable and did not have a growth potential, giving us a net of 76. 
15 restaurants are now under construction as we speak, and 38 are in the pipeline. So the growth story continues. Uh, BK Cafe, which is a story we started uh, towards the end of, uh, F, uh, towards the beginning of FY22, uh, that we have built 275 BK Cafes uh, that are operating. We continue to build BK Cafes as we build new restaurants where appropriate, uh, where we see the potential to do those. We are uh, kind of uh, integrated into our, uh, our development plan as we build restaurants. BK app, again, Kapil will talk a little more about this, but uh, a wonderful job. BK uh, app revenues grow 327% year over year. 6.2 million app installs, 107 growth over the last uh, year's install. So some, some progress on that side as well. And we continue to, we believe that, uh, you know, we will continue to spend on the app and uh, we'll continue to build that business over time. And, uh, and continue to work with our aggregate staff partners as well uh, to continue you know, servicing our consumers, both on, uh, on dining as well as delivery. But just a quick uh, note on Indonesia business summary. Uh, again, here we had uh, improvements in revenues, we had improvement in gross margins, uh, despite all the inflation in Indonesia in the past uh, uh, couple of quarters, we continue to improve on gross margins. Uh, we had a uh, 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 little sub, uh, you know, result on our uh, company EBITDA, and we will talk to that. I think uh, Sumit will spend some time talking about, you know, the launch of Popeyes uh, and how that uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, do some some uh, investment and also investment in what we call back to basics, which uh, with Sandeep will speak about when he gets into his section. But a lot of good investment was made in Indonesia. We are seeing some positive results. We continue to believe this is a very strong business uh, that uh, the foundations have been laid and we'll, we'll, I'll talk to it in a moment. Uh, store count 186 uh, over here uh, at, as of 30, uh, 31st of, uh, of March. Revenues, and these are in uh, IDR. Uh, IDR is uh, Indonesian uh, Rupiah. Uh, FY23, uh, we had the 1,153 billion, uh, and that was the versus FY22, which is 1,052 billion, a 9.5% improvement. Q4 FY23, IDR 276 billion versus Q4 of FY22, which is 249 billion, grew another 10.5% on top of that. I don't, uh, we have the uh, gross margin improvement numbers. Sumit will uh, address that. Uh, there, there is a gross margin uh, improvement as well uh, that, uh, that we were able to achieve. Uh, actually, I'll share that number with you. It's right over here. So we moved it to gross margin, moved up to 58% versus the previous year of 56.3%. I'm talking about the Burking portion of the business, uh, not including Popeyes, which is just forward. Um, so with that said, uh, let me just speak a little bit about uh, our business in Indonesia, and then Sandeep, uh, who will become a regular part of this uh, conversation, uh, this, this call, he will give you a substantially a little more details into the Indonesian business. So first of all, we, we shared with you last call that we had launched Popeyes in Indonesia. Uh, today in Indonesia, we have uh, 10 very healthy stores, uh, which are doing uh, fantastic sales. Uh, almost uh, two and a half to three times the volume of the working business that uh, we have over there, which we are, we are getting back into par. Uh, not only that, but, you know, again, as I told last time, this was a record launch for Popeyes globally. Uh, and Sandeep and his team have done a phenomenal job launching that brand over there. And, and uh, you know, we have 10 stores and we're going to build uh, additional stores and move towards 25, 30 stores towards the end of this year. Uh, and uh, this will become a significant profitable business uh, currently doing, uh, you know, restaurant level EBITAs in very high uh, teams. Uh, so, so good job there, Sandeep, and uh, you will talk more about this uh, on your section. Now, just coming down to, you know, what the pillars, what, what are we doing in Indonesia? Well, why, why are we so excited about Indonesia? So, first of all, you know, we took this business uh, and when we took this business, we wanted to obviously, uh, you know, lay the foundation for the next five to ten years, how we are going to build this business, how we are going to move this business forward. Uh, so, Burger King, as the name says, Burger and King, right? So, we, we wanted to make sure that we took the product line on the burgers, 
We tested the product line versus competition. We found gaps in those in terms of, uh, you know, uh, uh, both affordability, likeness, taste, and so forth. Uh, uh, Sandeep, who's an expert in NPD as well, an expert on the supply chain as well, uh, did a fantastic job over the last six to eight months in establishing each and every product line was taken from scores, and he can share the scores with you, but uh, tremendous improvement on our burger line, tremendous taste improvement, ter tremendous uh, consideration and, and, uh, and affordability and likability of these products. So we have now finished that process. It was completed between October and February of this, uh, this year. All products have been completed, all products have been tested, all products are now rolled into our restaurants. Second, we, we spoke about this, I think, uh, uh, about uh, eight months ago, nine months ago, when we were on the phone with you guys, that there was a significant gap uh, between our business uh, over there and the industry standard, which is chicken. We were not offering uh, chicken or we were not building that portion of the business, which is a strong business in Indonesia. In fact, I think it's a staple food over there, rice and, and chicken, and we were offering one chicken offering, which also in a test showed that there was a gap between what we, the, the industry standard was and where we were. So that, again, just completed this, this, this month. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, Sandeep will talk to you about how we are taking that into the market. Uh, we have completed, we have got now two versions of the chicken. We have a classic version and a spicy version of the chicken. Uh, this is standard. All other players have it. Uh, we, 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 we think that about 60 to 70 percent of the industry sales is in this, in this chicken area. And so we will start building this. In fact, uh, Sandeep will share with you the excitement about our rollout of this product. It's already rolled out, by the way, uh, but the communication portion of this will, 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 will come in at a future date. So I spoke about burgers. Chicken, which was done by May, May 23. Then we had a gap in desserts. Um, and this Indonesia is a major dessert market. There's a substantial amount of liking and, and, uh, and uh, purchase of, uh, of, uh, of desserts in the uh, QSR space. And we, we, we have now built a substantial menu, thanks to all the work uh, our CMO over there, Namita, has done. And she has built a fantastic dessert menu as well, which in Feb 23 was put, in, put into the restaurant. By the way, guys, all these things, initiatives, we are not started communication yet. We have just put these things in, and we are seeing that 10% of the other numbers I shared with you is all coming off just local uh, you know, uh, communication at the restaurant level. Media investment will start in June, uh, and then we will start talking about all these improvements moving forward. Uh, the last piece, which is my favorite piece, which is a piece that is relevant, strong, makes sense uh, for both markets, which is India and Indonesia, which is value. Uh, both countries are driven by value. Both uh, con countries continue to have a very strong consumer following under the name value. We have fixed both uh, quality, taste of products there. And now we are, you know, going through to push this onto media investment where we will be communicating a value proposition to bring people in to start trying the product. So this is basically the strategy that we communicated to you months ago, quarters ago. Today I'm happy to say that, you know, 80% of this strategy is already in place. Uh, the media event uh, and media communication will start, and we will start building this business and we'll, we'll share our, our, uh, our exciting uh, results in quarters to come. With that said, uh, I will turn it now over to Sumit, who will carry you through the India first and then uh, the Indonesia financials uh, and how we have performed in all the areas. So over to you, Sumit. Uh, thank you, Raj. Uh, the way we will uh, I'll try and do is to kind of uh, cover through uh, some of the strategies that we've always been following and how we've actually performed uh, through this year and the way we see each of these emerging in, uh, in the coming year as well. Uh, we were always focused on growth part of our business and uh, keeping that uh, very strongly as one of our pillars. Uh, we've grown uh, in open 88 new stores. Uh, at the same time, we want to be mindful that we don't carry uh, stores that are, that are underperforming and hence we have to shut down them. 
and the net opening uh, of 76 and ended the year at 391. Uh, we would continue on this growth journey and uh, we intend to get to uh, around 450 stalls uh, as we get towards the end of uh, fiscal at 534. So that journey of growth uh, continues and obviously it will be responsible growth uh, so that our sale uh, remains, uh, does not get uh, added. As far as revenue is concerned, I'm on slide 10 of our presentation. We grew from 940 crores to almost to 1,440 crores, a growth of 53%, uh, led by a strong uh, portfolio level EDS moving up from 100 to 118 for the year. And then as I explained, the balance part of the growth is coming for on account of the new stores that we added during the year and the annualization of the stores that we opened the previous year. And between the two years, now we've almost added 125 uh, stores plus uh, to this portfolio. Uh, the second part uh, of the pillar, which we've always been talking, and I'm on the, I'm still on slide 10, talking about dining team mix. You know, we've always been saying that our focus is uh, going to improve the dining share of the business because that's where we believe the customer experience uh, is uh, is, where, is uh, at its best. Uh, we've been able to move the needle by 9% point, which is a substantial shift that we've done from 49% to 58%. Uh, when Kapil talks about some of the initiatives that we are working on, we believe that we'll be able to further shift this needle uh, more towards uh, dining as we go along. So that journey that we had embarked upon with a very strong confidence on it uh, seems to now uh, starting to play out uh, for us. As far as uh, store level habitat is concerned for the full year, uh, we moved uh, from by 3% point from 5.2 to 8.3%. Uh, part of it was led by gross profit. Uh, at 66.4, uh, we've been able to kind of, uh, you know, through the, throughout these years, uh, all of you who are stacking us on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, you would realize that uh, we've been able to maintain the gross profit margins uh, at a very steady state of 66.4, 66.5% point range uh, throughout the year uh, by various initiatives that we took and could offset the impact of inflation that we've seen uh, to make sure that there is no variability that comes to a margin play. So that is something which we've been able to do that. Uh, having said that, uh, with all the challenges that we uh, have seen in the past, we strongly believe that we should be able to improve on to this number as we get into FY24. And we have, and as we get to the guidance part later, you will see that we've taken an improvement uh, on that part of the portfolio. Apart from gross profit, uh, you know, some of uh, the initiatives that we continue to work to improve efficiencies uh, did see some results in quarter three and quarter four. And if we really look at the kind of spends that we have been incurring on per stock or month basis or quarter basis, if you see there is a very clear shift in some of the fixed cost lines like labor, utilities and all that you would see. And as uh, as we are able to improve the sales going forward, we should start seeing the benefits of that going forward, flowing down into our uh, store EBITDA uh, as well. So for the year, at the company EBITDA level, we were at 2.5% uh, with uh, cash generation of 36 crores. Uh, having said that, and I'm, I'm going on to slide number 14 and talk a little bit about uh, uh, Indonesia. Indonesia, we did an uh, EDS uh, and, uh, of uh, six, 17 million IDR uh, in Burger King as against 16 billion IDR, a marginal improvement. Uh, we've kept the portfolio at 176 stores uh, as far as Indonesia is concerned. On the BK side, our focus is going to be to kind of get the business back to uh, its uh, back to cash break even which is what we are going to work towards there now through the year uh, we have made certain investments which obviously are reflecting in our uh, company EBITDA uh, and the number does seem large uh, but there are good amount of investments that we've already done uh, through the years and I'll just kind of call it out, call out some of the investments that are getting reflected in our numbers as we see. One is 
uh, we launched the brand Popeyes in Indonesia towards the later part of the year and uh, spends in order to launch the brand, uh, which stands at almost around six to seven crores, which is something which we've kind of put there. Uh, and we've had a very strong, successful brand uh, launch, and uh, Sandeep will talk about it. We expect that that brand should do uh, high teens in terms of store availability as we go towards, uh, as we kind of see the performance in FY24 and start seeing meaningful numbers uh, coming out of that brand. Apart from that, uh, you know, we've got, uh, we had made sure that the stores uh, look, start looking better and inviting as far as the customer is concerned. So we had, we had put money behind getting the stores back in shape. Uh, we have, we've kind of worked on making sure that the stores are operational for the hours that the customer wants us to be operational, uh, and hence effectively also to calls in terms of the availability of people to service the customer uh, throughout uh, throughout the period. So these are some of the big things that we've kind of already put in place. Uh, product development, which we will talk about. So we've literally got to through the year to make sure that we are ready. Uh, to roar into FY24 uh, with all the things that we've already put money behind, uh, taken the beating, uh, if I may say, but uh, ready to kind of make sure that from here uh, to be able to get to cash free to win in FY24. So that's where we stand as far as uh, Indonesia is concerned. Obviously, because we are still working towards getting to cash break even, the consolidated company Abita uh, did have. Uh, uh, did see a negative 60 crore, which we've kind of put as money that we required to put in Indonesia to bring that market back to shape. We, as Raj said, we still, uh, we strongly feel that that's a very strong market <coughs> with a very strong consumer base on the burger side as well as on the chicken side, which, uh, and with those two brands, we should be able to uh, achieve and report very strong performance in India as well as in Indonesia. So over to uh, Kapil to take us through the marketing update uh, there and talk about a little bit of uh, some of the things that we are working on uh, for next year. Uh, thanks, thanks so much and good morning everyone. Uh, I'll start with slide number 17. Slide number 17, as Raj mentioned and Sumit mentioned, it talks about a continuous focus on growing top line and specifically dine-in traffic on the back of value programs. So we've shared with you in the past the Stunner campaign uh, with an affordable veg and non-veg menu. We continue to drive that while we started testing an extension of the same items with a new meal proposition starting at 99. Now this program was tested in about 80 odd stores. We saw some very good early reads on dine-in traffic and our consumers really liked the idea of getting a full affordable filling meal at a very attractive price point. So we've since then scaled up the promotion Early days, but we are seeing very good traction on the same. On slide number 18, while we've taken, uh, you know, spoken to you about the Stunner value menu, uh, and we told you about the campaign that went viral, very happy to share that the social media campaign has won a silver award at the Clio International Awards, uh, which is next only to Cannes, and this is our first win on the global platform. Now, slide number 19 talks about how we continue to balance the barbell strategy on our menu. Last year, we launched the King's Collection menu with some very craveable products built on a basis, very strong consumer insights. You know, it has ingredients with, with like very high quality paneer, cheese, which are premium for our vegetarian guests, and also grilled and fried chicken burgers for our non vegetarian guests. And we will continue to innovate at all ends of the menu and offer great value for money to our guests. Slide 20 talks about Wapa, our flagship product. So we continue to strengthen it with a string of limited time products. Last quarter was an Indian inspired variant called the Indi Tikka Whopper, which did very well for us. An Indian business with the veg, chicken and the mutton Whopper, the three variants which are designed specifically for Indian guests, continues to be amongst the highest Whopper selling markets in the Burger King world. The next slide is an initiative that we are very happy and humbled to share that we are one of the first brands to recognize how important it is for our guests to get options of 100% veg, no onion, no garlic menu in certain religious towns or during their pilgrimages. And let's just share some pictures of our 100% veg restaurant that serves no onion, no garlic menu in Katra on the Vaishno Devi pilgrimage. 
Slide 22 talks about a continuous effort to build a youthful brand which talks and engages with Gen Z and millennials. So we make sure we are part of topical conversations like cricket, you know, whether it is any event that's happening in India or international Indian festivals like Diwali, international events like Halloween, moments like big movie releases and other events like Mother's Day and so on. And we continue to engage and talk the language I know that is our, our guests understand as they connect with it. The VK Cafe on Flight 23 is one of our most recent additions to the business and the menu. It continues to expand in footprint and is now available at 275 locations. Now obviously the task is to build awareness and we have been engaging a lot of social media influencers to help get the word out and as of last quarter we had reached out to almost 15 million of their followers by a very targeted store-based content building awareness about the fact that we now have cafe options available. Lastly, in addition to the clear word, the brand has won about 20 plus other marketing, product innovation and digital recognition in India. So in a nutshell, a strong value strategy, a lot of innovations across the menu, especially the premium end with things collection and limited time walkers, a new cafe expansion, and a brand that's continuing to build relevance in India, uh, in India with the Gen Z consumers. Now I'll hand it over to Sandeep to talk you through some of the key initiatives in Indonesia. Thank you, Kapil, and <clears throat> once again, a very, very good morning to all of you. So you heard Raj talking about our single-minded objective, right? The single-minded objective of building back this business into a profitable company. And he also spoke about the amount of ground we covered in the last few quarters on our key strategic growth pillars. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to share a little bit details about some of those strategic pillars. But before I do that, let me share the work we have done in strengthening our foundation so that we can deliver consistently a best-in-class guest experience every single day. I'm on slide number 27. See, what we have done is uh, we looked into every single aspect of our business which impacts guest experience and launched a company-wide cross-functional project called Back to Basics. The first thing we did was rationalize a lot of products which were not selling at all. So it helped us not only eliminate a lot of FTUs but also made the supply chain and operations much more efficient. By the way, in that process, we also made our many boat completely uncluttered and it kind of helped our guests navigate through the many boat and make their choices much more conveniently. Then we took most of our core products, as Raj said, took it to consumers, got them tasted, captured their feedback, identified those improvement areas, and recreated them based on those feedbacks, and got them validated once again through the extensive consumer research process. And through that process, we created our winning products, we created our winning menu. Also, as a part of Back to Basics, we have gone from store to store and checked every single piece of equipment to ensure that they are all fully calibrated, are in perfect working condition. We also carried out an extensive training program for 100% of our operators, 100% of our you know, crew members, to make sure that they are retrained on product builds, ops procedures, and so on and so forth, so that they are fully ready to deliver great customer experience. Right? Now, once we strengthened our foundation, we then started implementing all of our strategic initiatives. So I'm moving on to the next slide now. So our first priority was to build burger leadership and build that burger leadership through taste credibility, through flavor innovations, and build that equity through Whopper. We actually took our Whopper, took it to consumer, and developed a new Whopper build based on Indonesian consumers' preference, based on their palate, right? And I'm happy to share that the top-to-box taste scores are significantly better than the previous Whopper. In fact, in terms of product preference or product ranking, it's worth 77% compared to 23% of the old plastic Whopper bills. We also at the same time developed a premium layer called Gold Collection, which to me probably is undoubtedly the best tasting burger in a QSR chain here. These are pure taste intelligence and at the same time quite affordable pricing. They also, by the way, not only got great taste scores, but also fantastic value for money scores. And over a period of time, we believe strongly that this whole collection layer will also help us in building our burger superiority in the overall QSR landscape. 
Now I am moving to uh, the next slide, which is slide number 29. See, while we were studying the market, we also understood, as Raj also mentioned, that this is the market where fried chicken is kind of a staple food. And there are two kinds of fried chicken consumers. The classic non-spicy consumers, like kids and, and people who can't handle too much of spice, and then there are spicy lovers as well. And all brands, by the way, offer two kinds of uh, you know, chicken, spicy and the non-spicy. But BK, we had only one type of chicken, and that came out as a big opportunity area to bridge that gap and build a comprehensive bone-in chicken menu. So again, we followed the process, we did a lot of work, created multiple options, multiple iterations, and followed the same exhaustive process of consumer validation and eventually came up with two winning products, the spicy and the non-spicy. Both these products scored great taste scores, great purchasing and scores, and also perform better than the competition products. We are quite satisfied with these products we created, and we want as many guests to try our products. And then we actually launched just about a week back these two products at an extremely attractive price of 25000 for a piece of chicken, rice, and a drink. Just for uh, the perspective, it is almost about 30% cheaper than the next available pricing in the market. We also have an extremely strong 360-degree marketing campaign in place, which includes TV, it includes social, digital, mall branding, outdoor, basically a comprehensive plan in place, and that will be uh, live and kicking in the next few days' time. The last strategic pillar I'm going to talk about is building a strong dessert portfolio. Also, when we are selling the market, we learn that Indonesia is a market where consumption of dessert is very high, and there are many brands, by the way, local as well as chain international brands who are doing fantastic business on this particular category. And that became an opportunity area for us to build innovative, tasty, yet affordable desserts. So we partner with our dessert partner Nestle and launched our first branded dessert called Chip Cat Fusion. And by the way, we launched at a quite an affordable pricing of 15000 and then it did phenomenal business. We sold almost three times the volume and a very high incidence. And as a part of our ongoing strategy, we have a very strong pipeline to launch innovative and affordable desserts throughout the year. So that's all from my side on the Indonesia business, and I now hand it back to Sumit. Uh, thank you, Sandeep. I'll just quickly share the outlook uh, and then open up for uh, questions uh, from the participants. Uh, as we've continued our growth, growth journey, uh, we intend to get to 450 by FY34. And then as we've always been talking about, 700 stores by December 26th is where now our FY37 target uh, stands. Uh, as far as SSLG is concerned, on the back of all the initiatives that uh, couple spoke about, uh, we are taking a target of 10% uh, SSLG growth from where we, where we stand uh, or where we ended FY34 to be. And then we believe that with the initiatives that we have, we should be able to get to an SSG growth of 8% thereafter, year on year. On year. Uh, gross profit, uh, so, uh, you know, on the back of really the uh, a strong performance uh, and being able to sustain the gross margins at 66.5% range through the year, uh, we are taking a target of 67% of gross profits for the year and then improve it by further 2% over the next uh, few years. Uh, Indonesia, uh, our target for FI34 effectively uh, is to get to cash break even. Uh, we would not uh, look at growth uh, as far as Burger King is concerned, but we will continue to invest behind Popeyes and we intend to get to around 25 stores uh, by March of 23 as far as Popeyes is concerned. And then as we get to 700 stores in India, Indonesia, between both the brands, we should be able to get to 325 stores. And that's when we would be crossing uh, the number of 1,000 stores at the business level uh, over next uh, next three years. Uh, there. And, uh, and these are basically the broad guidelines uh, that we are working towards as a team. Uh, I would now open up for uh, questions from uh, the participants. Uh, Shandhi, uh, I would request uh, chorus call guys to extend the call by about 15 minutes, given that uh, you know we are already 35 minutes into the call. It will give you guys uh, more time to ask us questions. Thank you. Sure, sir. Thank you very much. 
ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking our question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star followed by one on your touchstone phone now. Take a first question from the line of Sirish Pardeshi from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good morning, uh, Rajiv and team. <clears throat> Thanks for the opportunity and hearty congratulations for uh, walking the talk. Uh, two things, uh, if I note uh, uh, from the India perspective, uh, you you mentioned that uh, on slide 11, uh, the, uh, the cost uh, is one of the elements which you are working very closely. Would you be able to help us to <clears throat> say that these all initiative, despite the inflation which is hitting very hard, and uh, we still see that inflation is not completely subsided, though we see that milk inflation will subside. But in FI23, what is the cost element has uh, driven in terms of efficiency extraction, in terms of gross margin? Maybe... Uh, if you can elaborate a little more, and what is that target you are uh, holding uh, for FI24? Uh, FI yeah. So thank you for your question. I'm, I'm going to give you a brief uh, uh, outlook, and then I'll turn it over to Sumer. See, uh, we uh, we just shared with you, a couple shared with you, a very aggressive promotion that we're going forward with, which is now uh, on television. It's uh, pasted all across the country which is the 99 rupees meal, right? Uh, despite that 99 rupees meal, our outlook, which is just shared by Sumit, for next year is to improve gross margin to 67, right? So how, do, how are we going to do this? So as, as, uh, as you recall, we just shared with you that we built net 76 new restaurants this last year. We continue to get that total up to 450 this year. So we have two elements that will be just automatic. One is, you know, uh, buying, because our buying quantities continue to increase, and hence we continue to drive prices down as the buying quantities increase, because there's a substantial growth in our portfolio. And second is our transportation cost continues to decrease as we, uh, you know, put more and more stores into existing markets where there's maybe two or three stores today and go to five or six stores. The transportation costs over there goes down. Uh, the on the company level side, you find that you know we have kind of put the structure in place, which is now uh, you know long term for the next five to ten years is, is a stable structure. We don't uh, you know we don't see adding any uh, additional department or any additional leadership role. Uh, they will be small, you know. Uh, under under the uh, leadership, some changes here and there, and in, in, in terms of GNA, but we we see that GNA is kind of uh, a fixed cost that's going to kind of uh, stay there, and you know probably go towards somewhere between four to five percent in the future. So those are the advantages you will start seeing in the PNL. You'll also see a massive, uh, you know, impact, positive impact on rent line because as you as the volumes go up. So there's two components to rent. There's a fixed uh, component and a variable component. The variable component of rent uh, will continue to, you know, kind of be uh, whatever percentage towards the total top line growth. But the fixed rents and this. There's several uh, uh, restaurants with just fixed rents. That fixed percentage keeps going down as the volumes increase, and that will also add on to the P&L uh, volumes. So those are the major kind of strings, and I'll turn it over to Sumit if he wants to add anything to this. Uh, no, just a couple of points I would add uh, to that. So Raj has already covered the cross margin and the rental piece. Uh, there are two other lines which we are very actively working on uh, to kind of make sure that we are able to bring efficiencies. One is the utility line, a line which sees the maximum inflation, uh, and that is where we have now uh, kind of started working with uh, internally as well as taking support from some external uh, consultants as well to be able to identify opportunity to bring uh, the reduction in uh, consumption. And uh, the early results have shown positive signs, so we should be able to kind of uh, uh, work towards building, uh, kind of beating the inflation there uh, as we kind of build, you know, efficiency that line. And the second one is when we make some investments on the application side on the backend to be able to very closely monitor the way uh, we budget 
or plan our uh, people cost at the store level, and that's where we will also see some uh, efficiencies to come in as compared to what we've seen last year. Secondly, last year, you know, in quarter two, you you, uh, you would remember that we made some investments. Uh, now that has now started to stabilize, and we've seen uh, the per uh, month cost per labor. Uh, to stabilize downwards on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. If you just plot that number, you would realize that we've only uh, been spending lower as in uh, quarter three and quarter four as compared to the previous quarter. So, and this will we will now take the benefits into the subsequent year uh, into FY24. That's really helpful, uh, Sumit. Uh, uh, to follow up here, uh, uh, when you say that uh, we will reach towards 67% uh, gross margin. Uh, I, I see that there is a lot of stress uh, across India and uh, uh, even in Indonesia we have spoken that there is a media investment which is there. So would you be able to help me uh, with uh, two questions? Uh, one is what is the FY23, the media and ad spends we have incurred and maybe that number how it looks like in 24. And second, uh, uh, would you be able to help us to say that uh, from 11.5-11.6% EBITDA, uh, can we build 12.5%, uh, 13% or we should look at in the medium term about 11% and then build 11.7% uh, 11 11.8%. So maybe some, maybe some color if you can add. So, Sirish uh, Prashant here, uh, our media spend marketing is, is, is governed by our MFDA, which has been at 5% and it will continue to remain at 5%. Uh, that's true for most of the QSR in the country. Uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, your uh, second question is concerned, uh, you, know, you may see a little bit of a higher media spend in Indonesia, but otherwise we will try to kind of keep this at about 5%. So as you know, uh, from the time that we've gone public, uh, we've refrained from giving kind of a guidance uh, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, our, our, our restaurant data and uh, company revenue data. But if you are looking for a direction, I think uh, Raj is Raj kind of eluded this, uh, and it's it's you know if you broadly look at it, uh, and this is something that we've been consistently communicating in our one-on-one -on -one, uh, meeting with our investors and analysts alike. Uh, some part of our business uh, and the costs are are very directly linked to our ADS. Uh, unfortunately, for the sector as a whole, uh, you know this quarter was a softer quarter in terms of the ADS. We are seeing grass shoots of uh, recovery. The quarter also met with a lot of inflationary pressure, which also we are now seeing signs of that abetting. Uh, so if you put all these pers things into perspective, assuming that, you know, if Sumit is talking about 10% sales store guidance, uh, you know, we ended FY23 at about 118,000 of ADS, you add 10% to this. And if you then do your math, you will see directionally we will be north of where you are. Uh, but as I said, we don't like to guide this, but directionally you will see a significantly uh, improved FY24 solution. Yeah. And, and just to add to what Prashant uh, just said, uh, see, while we continue to spend 5%, if you, if you appreciate in FY22, our total sales was around, you know, 9,437, right, million? Uh, now that's gone up by 51%. And this year it will go further up as we continue to build restaurants. So the media money, while it's only 5% of the total revenues, the total money available continues to grow. And that's why you will find, you know, a company that, you know, did only maybe four or five weeks on, in advertisement uh, on television, grew to, you know, 20 weeks, grew to 30 weeks, continue to be able to do more and more of advertisement, whether it's on uh, television out or uh, out of home. So this, this thing will continue to grow in terms of volume of communication. The impact to the PNL will be exactly the same because we don't go beyond the 5%. We have gone in the past when we were not public, but as a company today, we have substantial amount of money within that 5% to continue promoting our restaurants. So I hope uh, between myself and, and Prashant, we can address both those questions of yours. But thank you very much for your questions. Yeah, uh, I just have a last question. Uh, thank you, Rajiv, for the detailed explanation. Uh, when I look at the competition, and um, primarily from uh, McDonald, uh, because they have, uh, McDonald is also putting a lot of focus on India market, and they have revived uh, the northern business also, and um, everybody's talking about getting the piece of uh, sales in the market. Now, that's one part. Uh, the national competition is evolving, and second, uh, the local competition is always there, not from direct from the burgers or uh, pizza 
Kerala's or KFCs, but there is also a new development which is happening from the likes of chicken sandwich and other thing. So I'm just trying to draw your attention. Do you think this competition is uh, remain benign or stable or is increasing, or do you expect any some disruptions from the uh, not directly from the chicken or burger format, but indirect formats? Uh, Shri, shall quickly answer that, and then we'll move on to the next. Uh, earlier, ever since we started Business Dad, and the team's view has always been we viewed as every single cuisine as competition, not just uh, a competition from a category stand. From category standpoint, it's a, it's as of now a duopoly kind of an environment. Uh, people will try to get in because it's an attractive proposition. But every guidance that we have given uh, has been given, keeping in mind all the factors that you mentioned. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We take a next question from the line of Harsh Shah from Dimensional Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, good morning, sir. Just, just wanted to understand that the ADS has been lingering at around one like fifteen, one like eighteen thousand BB. Uh, peaked at one twenty-seven thousand, couple of quarters back, and but we are down back to. 112. So just wanted to understand what will drive this incremental ADS because we are taking a lot of, a lot of initiatives with our stunner and value menus and we are also adding a lot of cafes and one year down the line we will have nearly 250 cafes which will be a year old. So just wanted to understand that how, how will this ADS pan out over the next couple of years? So I, this is Kapil, I'll take this question. Uh, see, part of what you see in the trend is seasonality. Yeah, the 127 quarter is, is all the school holidays, uh, you know, middle of the year, which is very high seasonality. So that helps us sort of, uh, you know, uh, increase sales along with the promotions that we're running. Um, and the future programs, I shared a little bit of that in my commentary that we are now rolling out the 99 meals program. Uh, and we're seeing some good early reads. Uh, we piloted that in about 80 odd stores and we saw some good growth in dining traffic. Uh, and now we are expanding that to the to, to national promotion. Uh, we we are spending money on media, you know, traditional digital uh, billboards, outdoor mall branding, and we we are expecting good growth on the back of this promotion. I just add uh, Harsh to what Kapil mentioned. One of the things that you will have to understand the nature of our business is every time we open a restaurant. Uh, it takes the restaurant to to reach a certain degree of maturity over the next 24 months, 36 months. And if you just see today the 391 restaurants that we have, and if you just do the simple math, the number of restaurants that we've opened over the last uh, two and a half, three years, you will see that close to about 40, 45% of the restaurants, uh, of the total restaurants that we have, have opened over the last two, three years. As you move forward, as these restaurants, as these locations mature, there is a natural tendency of traffic coming into this, uh, and which is the whole genesis behind the kind of 8% uh, you know, same store growth guidance that we've given from FY25 to 27. So it's a combination of almost everything that you mentioned, not one specific uh, factor, uh, product, marketing, the restaurants maturing, uh, you know, new product introduction. It's a combination of all of that, Ash. And on the Indonesia side, if I look at the ADS, it, uh, it was around 89,000 this uh, quarter. Uh, and then you say that we had 10 stores of Popeye, which are doing almost two, two to three times higher ADS than Burger King. Then would it be fair to assume that the ADS for uh, BK was even much lower than what it used to be in previous quarter? Then what would be the strategy? I mean, are we looking at rationalizing some of these stores here and add more of Popeye's? How, how do you see this business? So, Harsh, let me, uh, before I hand it over to uh, Sandeep, but I'll just uh, correct you. The Indonesian uh, ADS that Sumit mentioned, 117, was purely uh, on the burger side of the business. Uh, when you look at the Popeye's ADS, uh, when we said that we are doing almost two, two and a half times of the burger, that separate the restaurants have just started, the impact of that you will feel in the in the next year. Uh, one big thing that I still want to reiterate, which Sumit and I have mentioned, is your, uh, you know, if you look at the numbers that we have shared, we are uh, currently guiding that next year the Indonesian business will achieve a cash break even, uh, which is a very, very big milestone from where uh, the business that we acquired. And if you just do the, the math itself, that swing is close to about uh, uh, 100 crore swing, right? And this encompasses everything that Sandeep mentioned, everything that Raj mentioned, uh, all the initiatives, including opening of Popeyes, all the work that he has done to improve the uh, burger uh, ADS to probably where we acquired on the pre COVID levels. Sandeep, you want to add anything else? or? 
No, I think uh, Prashant, you have covered pretty well. Uh, in the last quarter, practically all the improvement in ADF we have seen is from the burger side of the business itself. And as both Raj as well as I mentioned that we have we have covered a lot of groundwork in terms of strengthening the foundation and then started in, uh, putting in all of our strategic pillars. So you will you will see a lot of improvement on our ADF on the burger side of the business as well. Uh, just a last follow-up on this, we have reduced our gross margin guidance from 68% to 67%. So, is it fair to assume that we won't be taking any price like this year? And, and, and what would be the thought process behind lowering this guidance? Yeah, so so we just shared with you this uh, 99 rupees promotion uh, that is going out, uh, which is out now in the, in the restaurants and so forth. So, we have adjusted, you know, we, we, we have, our goal this year is to drive traffic uh, and specifically dine-in traffic, and uh, and you will see that that's the focus area, and we have shifted. I, again, by the way, we are showing improvement in gross margin as well, right? We are, we are moving from our ending 66.4 towards 67. So we continue to drive that because that those efficiencies come because of all the all all the uh, you know the transportation, the buying, and so forth that, that I mentioned earlier. So we'll continue driving that. But we're kind of a little mitigated because of the fact that uh, we are uh, on aggressive promotion to drive traffic, and you will you will see the results of that. The impact of traffic and volumes has a complete impact on the P&L, whether it's the labor line, whether it's the rental line, the utility line. You will find all the leverages coming in on the, all those lines, and then uh, henceforth on the restaurant level, like we Thank you for your question. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. We take a next question from the line of Nihal Jam from Novama Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you so much. A couple of clarifications. One was when you're targeting the 8% SSSG for FY24, is it in a way factoring in some improvement in the macro given you just highlighted about the weakness or this is something that we believe will play out given the initiative looking? It's a, first of all, it is 10% uh, that uh, we have kind of put in the guidance. It's not 8%. So, so remember, it was 8%. Just uh, Someone just pointed out on the gross margin. So I, <laughs> let me take the liberty to find out also on, on the SSSG. It used to be 8%. But, you know, we have moved that guidance to 10%, uh, and it's on the back of the aggressive year that we are planning in terms of driving dining traffic, getting people back into our restaurants and the, at, the, at the dining level. And you will find uh, that that's, uh, that's the, the, the impact that we are showing positive on 10%. It is all those programs, and, and we kind of consider everything the previous uh, uh, the inquiry was on, you know, all the competition coming in. So all that is taken into perspective before we give that guidance, and that guidance stands with our thing. May I just to add to what Raj is saying? Uh, the guidance is where things stand today in terms of the environment. Uh, we, as as we mentioned, right, uh, we've seen uh, some form of first level of recovery uh, starting in May. Uh, you know, if the environment were to get better, we come back every quarter, we'll probably up the guidance. If the environment for some reason were to worsen, uh, we'll also have a, have a platform to be transparent and honest about it and share with you guys. But from where we where, where we stand and what we see, this is where we believe is where we want to guide you guys. That is helpful. This is one final question was on the corporate overhead bit. Uh, uh, I think Raj highlighted that there is a target to keep it to 4 to 5 percent for the India business. If that is the number that more or less plays out, we are looking at maybe it being flat versus where it was in FY23. So just your comments on the same. Yeah, it's true. Uh, we are, if you look at my FY23 uh, corporate uh, GN as a percentage of revenue, it's roughly about uh, 5.8, and what Raj is saying, our endeavor will be to bring this down to 5% uh, going forward. And uh, then the operating average kicks in, right, as you keep uh, scaling, and we have to scale to 700 by FI27, so you will see further improvement there. But yes, the endeavor is to bring it to closer to 5% next year. That's helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. We take a next question from the line of Pratik Bodar from Nippon India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Just uh, two questions. One is, what are the kind of assumptions behind Indonesia break-even which you're guiding for? So, if you could give us some flavor in terms of what kind of ADS are you looking at and the gross margins? So, uh, Pratik, simply put, uh, to answer your question shortly, uh, 
एट ऑलमोस्ट ट्वेंटी वन मिलियन आई डी आर वी ब्रेक इवन दैट इज हाउ मच ऑफ इंजिन बिटवीन ओके वन लैक फाइव थाउजेंड फाइव वन लैक टेन थाउजेंड लैक फाइव टू वन लैक टेन थाउजेंड गॉल इट गॉल इट and that is what you are aiming for for in fy24 right yes we are our, as we mentioned this right even on our uh, is generally that in indonesia we we uh, collectively want to stabilize the business first before we put the accelerator and which is why you will see we guided for only 15 incremental stores of properties for the current year uh, we will do some rationalization with respect to the burger king stores a lot of effort uh, sandeep and team have put both on the product side now we are beginning to spend money on the marketing side and which is where we believe that we should be you know we should be able to deliver uh, you know uh, a break even areas uh, during the year and uh, you know that's showing the 100 crores in uh, uh, this year with this goal as per plan uh, we have a very different fy25 and you know if i were to go back to pico where i think the ads was 135k yeah despite doing a back to basics kind of uh, program you still are targeting 105k at least in stage 1 i would have thought at least you should have gone very close to 135k isn't it with the amount of portfolio rationalization you have done the amount of retraining which you have just talked about the new desert portfolio which you have introduced so so prateek uh, you know this raj uh, thanks for your question by the way it's been a while since uh, since we met uh, look here prateek uh, you know we are we are kind of treading slowly in indonesia right we we have had losses this last year and we our objective is to not you know we have got all these programs that we invested this last year in the last pnl we have invested severely on whether it's the product side whether it's the equipment readiness whether it's you know introducing new products all these things we have invested significantly right as we go into the new years we are going to turn on we, you know you cannot communicate all the five pillars on day one right you will be starting out with chicken communication it's going to come out so we'll start communicating chicken it will drive a lot of people into our restaurants when those people come into our restaurants they'll also you know see the burger menu they'll also see the uh, the menu on on our uh, desserts so we we're, we're going to thread this slowly and it's going to come back slowly it does not come back immediately as you go on television it builds up and that's the important thing is we are now set up a machine that's going to be cumulative moving forward versus you know doing coupons and getting someone in with a coupon and then until you drop the next coupon no one's coming in but this is a cumulative machine which is the right way to run you know a long term kind of a gain program yeah i'm i am very gung ho on this indonesia business i think this business when it generates when it does a uh, uh, idea of uh, you know about 26 million 27 million it throws high double digit restaurant level ebitda and it is because of the rent structure it's because of the cost structure over there it is just a very very profitable business we need to get this idea back we're kind of sitting where we are at about 17 18 we are we have started moving in the north direction uh you know we we have given you the 21 number as a break even number but that break even number could also be you know some cost controls it could be some higher ebitda uh, higher revenues a, a, a combination of various things right but the objective is basically to be cash you know neutral in in indonesia and then move on to the next year to start building and by the way at the same time we're putting in new popeyes restaurant which generate you know three times uh two to three times the volume of the of our, of a burgeoning business there so we'll continue to build that business we'll continue to to put back the burgeoning business on the right track and then start building them together in the the year following that so that's basically the majority of the plan thank you again good question sure. Sure. The, the experience of 2x to 3x ads are we seeing on or it on all the 10 11 stores which were opened till now or Sorry, so not sorry. Not in couldn't get your question. You didn't get your question. No, I think sorry. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. No, I was just asking the experience of 2x to 3x ADS on the Popeyes portfolio in Indonesia. Is it applicable to the entire 10 stores which you have opened till now? 
So here we mentioned that in the slide, Pratik, this is the launch ADS. Uh, yeah. Then, uh, and at the same time, we mentioned that at a weighted average company level, we want to be at the uh, 21 million ADS, 21, 21.5 to break even. So we are factoring that this is the launch ADS, and there will be some adjustment as, as the restaurant moves forward. But we are not guiding that you know all popular restaurants will have 2 to 2.5 times. Mm -hmm. is a launch ADS has been 2.5 times for the full year. Uh, collectively, 